Good morning. <clears throat> Sorry, I sound a bit hoarse. Uh, g'day, it's Tanja here, Peak Performance uh, Specialist for Real Estate Principals and teams that want to grow themselves and their business in the least amount of time. And welcome to Mindset Mastery Monday. It is Monday, the 24th of June, as I am shooting this. Kate Ashton, mwah, mwah, mwah. good morning. Congratulations for being out this morning, walking with your gloves on in two degrees in that good old Ballarat. Hey, Grant, great to have you here. I hope that you're well. So welcome once again. Um, Taylor's here. Yeah, g'day Taylor, great to have you tune in. How was your weekend everybody? If you're in real estate, how was show day? What were your experiences like? Please let me know, I'm keen to hear. Have you noticed, g'day Nathan Paris, good to see you here my friend. Uh, have you noticed a shift in the, in, in the industry and in the market since the election was on and has happened? Uh, because we have noticed in certain states that there's a little bit more buyer and vendor confidence, which is great. Jsprinkle.com. Hey, JS, jsprinkle.com. Karen George, good morning to you, my love. Great to have you tune in here this morning. So keen to hear, if you're in real estate, just type in, what have you seen shift in the market since the election? I'm keen to get your experience and type in where you're actually from. So I want to start by saying thank you for choosing to spend your morning with me. This morning I am going to share really, really simple four steps to interrupt uh, you know, you and I have 60 to 90,000 thoughts per day. 90% of those thoughts that we have are regurgitated thoughts from the day before, and 85% are, of them are negative. Conrad, Samantha, how are you? Beautiful. Great to have you here. I don't know, you made me do a jig. Uh, so yeah, they're regurgitated thoughts and most of them are negative. And how, why are they negative? Because they're just all thoughts, beliefs, opinions, judgments and assessments that we've gained from experiences that have happened to us in the past. And those experiences don't stay in the past where they belong. They get filed out there in the future and our subconscious mind keeps thinking about them or worrying about things that haven't even happened yet and starts to literally, every single thought we have, we have consistent thoughts over time we're literally, literally hardwiring our brain for either positivity or negativity. And I can tell you from the research, 98% of the planet's brain is heart people's brain. Why? mean it to be we don't want it to be it's just an automatic response because we haven't become the master of our own mindset does that make sense g'day Lou great to have you here too my friend <laughs> so if you're watching this live do me a favor and type in live and if you're watching the record right type in record just so I know when this is connecting with you so I want to share with you four very simple strategies to interrupt a negative thought pattern so you can start creating some space and actively choose your thoughts hey Bridget great to have you here Happy Monday. Thanks for dropping by. Hope this is going to be of value. This is something I have talked a lot about before, but I get the question a lot as a peak performance coach. How do I interrupt a negative thought pattern? Again, right on cue, Chelsea, my youngest dog, can, my eldest dog, can you hear her rolling around on the floor? She she's, makes a cameo every Monday and Friday. Okay, so step number one, I like to um, use the metaphor of a garden hose. Consider our mind that's the, the, the back of our mind. Imagine you've got a garden hose that's on full ball, right? The full pressure water. And it's flopping and flipping and flapping around the backyard of your mind. And it's watering the neighbor's car, the neighbor's washing, you're washing your car, the concrete, the fence, the house, you know, the hill's hoist, if you have a hill's hoist here in Australia. And uh, it's watering the weeds. And then you've got this amazing veggie patch of fertile soil waiting for conscious seeds of thought of what you want to create in your life to go in. But our mind is just all over the place. 60 to 90,000 thoughts a day flipping around, all around in the backyard of our mind. And mostly hitting the weeds, hitting the fence, hitting the car, hitting the letterbox, not hitting the very thing that we want to bring forth and manifest in our lives. Hey, Diane, great to have you here. And um, who have we got here? Mary? Mary? Mary Wang? I'm sorry. So step one, 
of the four steps to interrupt negative thought patterns is what I call hone the hose. If your mind is a hose that's going on like crazy in the backyard, watering everything, you have to hone it. You have to take control of it. And that is just by having awareness. Good morning, Jackie. How are you, my love? So you must have awareness of your thoughts and you must determine whether they are a positive or a negative thought. And how will you know? How do you know if you're having a positive or a negative thought? Just type it in for me. Good morning, little creatures. Hey, Fairy Mary. Hey Dee, great to have you here. Good morning everyone. How do you know if you're not driving? How do you know if you're having a positive or a negative thought? Type it in. I'm really keen to know. See how quick you can do it so I don't say it. It's a really good indicator. You've got four bodies, the physical, mental, emotional and spiritual. Good morning Dee. Hey Owen Davis, thanks for tuning in. Great to have you here. All right, for the purpose of time, Stephen Bailey's in the house. For the purpose of time, you know how you feel. You feel shit. If you feel deflated, if you feel defeated, if you feel like crap physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, chances are you're programming your brain to be feeding the negativity thoughts, the negative thoughts that you're having. Get a home cleaning services and it's having a significant impact on your physiology. So step one, hone the hose. Step two, step A and B of uh, one is have an awareness. Am I thinking positively or negatively? Step two, Notice if you're thinking negatively, you'll be watering the weeds. You will be watering the very thing that you do not want to manifest in your life. Silvana Tedesco's tuned in. Um, energy level drops. Yes, feeling is heavy. Thank you, Stephen. So my question was, how do you know if you're thinking positively or negatively? How do you know if you are thinking negatively? Stephen's like, yeah, you feel heavy. And my energy drops. Let me ask you, how do you know? Tune in. It's actually really important that you know what are the actual physical um, signals the brain for suffering and um, you know negativity do you lose energy do you feel tight do you feel tired do you feel stressed do you feel anxious do you contract that's what I do I contract I go I kind of shrink wrap <laughs> myself energetically and I feel really tight and tense and I'm holding on typically when we're thinking negative thoughts we're in a fear orientation and what we want to step into is a love orientation so the four steps to interrupting a negative thought pattern a hone the hose your, for those that have just joined your mind is like a garden hose it's on full ball in the background in the backyard watering everything including the weeds number two you're typically watering the weeds 60 to 90,000 uh, thoughts a day, 90% of them the same regurgitated thoughts as yesterday. If I them in, if you're putting the thoughts that you want to create. And every single thought that we have, every single thought that we have, when we have it time after time after time, we are literally training our brain to build itself, to build the neurological pathways, the connectors to be hardwired to fire thoughts of negativity that activates our entire um, physiological system. G'day, turns off key room. I don't know if I've said that right, but I'm really glad that you've joined. Where are you watching from? By the way, where are you watching from? Mandy Wilson, mwah, mwah, mwah. good morning to you. Just type in what city you're watching from. <clears throat> so step one, hone the hose. Step two, stop watering the weeds. Now the weeds are all the negative beliefs, judgments, opinions, assessments that you have about yourself, others in the world, that you have about your body, your money, your business, your prospecting, your listings, your sales, your husband, your kids, your booty, your bank account, as I said, everything, <clears throat> everything you're thinking, and every time that you think it, there you go, building your brain, building your brain, building the neurological receptors to be hardwired, to literally then fire, to actively think about negative things because your body has become addicted to the negative suffering, addicted to the feeling of being disempowered, addicted to being a victim. This is a fact. Now, a victim is just literally someone that believes they are at the mercy of external circumstances. It's someone that they believe that they don't have the uh, ability to transform it and change their external circumstances. So, hey, sorry, Hills, Northwest, beautiful part of the world. Thanks, Mandy. What you want to then do is just notice the negative thought, step two, and shift it and just don't buy into it, don't crack the whip. You want to shift your thoughts into something you'd love. So you're going to shift your thoughts into that fertile soil. A, have awareness. B, do 
do me a favor, do yourself a favor. Don't beat yourself up for the negative thoughts that you have about yourself, others in the world. You're human, it's normal, but we wanna master our mindset because everything we think about comes about. When you are thinking crap thoughts and then you feel like crap, you're broadcasting a negative frequency out to the universe that is only gonna say yes to everything that you're sending and you will find that you are manifesting. The guy, the girl, the, the loss of income, the drop of income, you know, the situations, the weight, the fear, the worry, the drama that you're thinking about. It's energy and it is energy in motion. <clears throat> Jessica Kerbin, g'day Adam, great to have you here too. We're talking about how do you interrupt negative thought patterns? How do you master your mind? Stop watering the weeds and start to fertilize the seeds of your soul. Great, Greg, good, good for you for joining in. Andrew's tuned in as well. I love you, Jessica. Okay. So myself for the fourth time <laughs> although I'm tempted uh, you're gonna hone the hose you're gonna stop watering the weeds you're not gonna beat yourself up you're gonna start to shift your, you're gonna notice that you feel negative you go cool I gotta catch this you're gonna sh start to shift your mind into the fertile soil and you want to ask yourself what would I love when you're thinking a negative thought I promise you you're in fear you're in fear of what's happened or you're worried or you're anxious. And when we're in fear and worried and anxious, we're not present. We're either stuck in the past about the stuff that's happened and the breakdowns that have happened, or I know most of you, especially in real estate, uh, you're projected into the future or you're worried about the future and what may happen. That doesn't give you any power in the now. That doesn't give you any potency in the present, which is all there really ever is. So step three, shift your focus in what would I love? And notice when you have a negative belief, you I want you to literally ask yourself, does this does the belief that my me? Does the belief that you know money's tight or I don't have enough money serve me? Does the belief that I don't have enough time? Does the belief that you know she, she this, he, that, my kids, that, my business, that is it serving you? And it won't be. So, but you've got to ask yourself the question, is this belief serving me? And you want to create, step three, useful beliefs to what you'd love. So if you don't like the feeling that you're feeling, then you are the author, not the story. Tell a much better story, write a much better masterpiece by asking yourself, what would I love? And then start to shift your focus on what you'd love. And the best way you can do that is apply Mel Robbins 54321 and just go and do number four, which is, Take an action to what, towards what you'd love. The only thing that's going to shift your belief system is when it starts to see you taking actions that are contrary to your fears, worries, and concerns. Does that make sense? Does this make sense to you, by the way? G'day, Joanne. Great to have you here. Brendan for jumping on. So the four steps to interrupting negative thinking is A, hone the hose, the garden hose of your subconscious mind that's watering everything but mostly the weeds. Two, when you notice you're watering the weeds, how do you know? Because you feel like crap. That's just you watering your fears, worries and anxieties that's going to manifest them in the future because what you think about consistently becomes a habit that you create and come about. <clears throat> Number three, ask yourself, what would you love? and shift it by also asking yourself, is this thought serving me? Is this helping me build the future that I desire? Because I know that everything I think about comes about. And number four, tell yourself, five, four, three, two, one, choose a more empowering belief and take an action in consistent, consistent belief. Does don't wait to feel confident in a situation that you're struggling with. The only way you'll feel confident is by having evidence of the action that you've taken to shift that belief. Action is the only way to create a whole new reality for yourself. Honing the hose and awareness is one thing, but then it's another thing to take the brave action, whether that is declare bankruptcy, whether that is to reduce expenses and tell your team we've got to strip things back, whether that is to end a relationship, whether that is to interrupt the pattern of overeating or, you know, social media, you know, addiction. Too many of us have way too much potential and potency and dreams that are, you know, sitting inside of our soul that came here to be realised and expressed. Too many of us act like the external things and situations and people and, um, you know, conditions are the very reason why we can't have what we want. Too many of us don't that we are, the magicians that we are, 
on planet Earth. And too many of us give our power away to other people. Please be the author, not the story. What's happened to you in your past has happened. You can either ask why me or you can ask what is this teaching me? And when you ask what is this teaching me, you will get access to something to create an action to shift. If you stuck in the sediment and the quicksand, the emotional quicksand of why me, you will be an eternal victim that will suffocate in your own suffering. I don't want that for you because you are a miracle on earth and you deserve to live the best, juiciest, most dynamic life possible. Love, dear 54321 to change this thought. Karen George, that is from Mel Robbins, international peak performance coach, number one female speaker on the planet right now that's about to launch her talk show. If you haven't read her book, 54321, uh, I highly recommend it. The beauty of 54321, it literally changes the activity from the back of your brain, your subconscious brain, to your um, neocortex, the front, which is the rational part of the brain. When we are trying to make decisions from the back of our brain, that is accessing the past. It's as accessing our beliefs and it's accessing the stuff that really doesn't serve us. That's accessing the tap that is going to keep the hose going on in the background. So be aware of your thoughts. Stop watering the weeds. Shift your focus to the fertile soil and start planting seeds of your soul. Start planting seeds of what you'd love and then five, four, three, two, one. Go and take an action and then your mind will start to see you taking action in accordance to what you desire versus sinking in the emotional quicksand of the suffering of your fear. Make sense? Tell me, out of those steps, which one do you know you need to practice today? What negative thoughts are you running? and beating yourself up about the stuff that's happened or you're worried will happen bring your energy and focus and attention into the here and now because you know the, this moment is a gift that's why it's called the present and all you have is in the present and if you're just stuck in your head and you miss out on dropping into the present and into your heart you will not have access to intuitive intelligence and that is where your inner teacher, your inner to it sits. That's the guide of your soul. And when we give up thinking, give up thinking, trust our gut, G-U-T. When we give up thinking and listen to the voice of our soul, that's when magic truly occurs. It might mean that you need to take, to take courageous acts. It might need, mean that you need to step into deep vulnerability. And it might mean you might feel your potential. And why not? We're here once. It's time to truly live. I hope that this has meant something to you today. Thank you, Bob. Life, Sam, property manager, and Lance, one who's joined. We are about to wrap off. Thanks, Brendan. Uh, please let me know with an emoji whether this connected with you. Type in for me what you got out of it. And, you know, let me stick around for five more minutes if you've got a question because Mindset Mastery Monday is all about answering the questions that you have. So this question was, how do I interrupt negative thoughts? First time that I am here hearing you. Hey, Andrea, I hope you found it beneficial, my love. Uh, <clears throat> please, you know, also, if you don't want to ask a question live here, action. Ah, oh, Diane, yes, listen, action, 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 action is the only thing. You know, people wait to believe in themselves before they act. You're going to be waiting a long time. The only way you're going to believe in yourself is by having evidence of the action you've taken. And so trust your gut. Don't wait to have all the ducks lined up and have everything perfect before you start to take bold action. It doesn't work that way. Take the action. And if you made a mistake, adjust. Just, just here. a little bit here. Action, great. Little creatures, moi, sheer perfection as always. You're so welcome. All right, my friends, if there are no questions or you don't want to ask publicly, please DM me privately because I'm absolutely here for you. And if I don't know the answer, I will research it and bring the answer to you because I really, really desire you to live a happy and deeply fulfilling life for yourself, for myself, and together we can rise if we come together and ask the questions and practice the things that are working to seeing people really fulfill their potential and live a life they love. So may you have a beautiful Monday. May you have an amazing week. May you access the courageous parts of you and do what you know feels right. Don't live an inauthentic life because this life is what you have. This life is what you have.
Happy Monday. Have a brilliant day. Thanks, Karen. Lots of energy and passion this morning. Love it. You're very welcome, Stephen. Uh, I love you all. Have a beautiful day and week. And as always, from the late, great Maya Angelou, remember, people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Go and make yourself and those in your world and the strangers you connect with today feel worthy, amazing, seen, valid, important, and the center of the universe right here, right now, because that's all that matters. One second, one moment at a time. Have fun. I let you too, Mary. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Have a beautiful day. I'll be back for my uh, Rapid Fire Friday, 8 a.m. Friday uh, this week to share the top coaching themes from this week. To also those of you that are going up to Sydney like me for the Real Estate Business Awards, the women on, inaugural Women in Real Estate Awards, Thanks so much uh, to share this, this amazing knowledge with us this morning. Andrea, my love, you are welcome. Welcome to the tribe. If you'd love to have this content emailed you for free without steak knives and a jacket full of gold watches, then just shoot me via DM, love your um, email, and we'll add you to our tribe so you get all the videos from our previous podcasts. All right, take care. Have an amazing week. I love you. Live a beautiful life and see you very, very soon uh, on Friday. Take care. See you to, uh, uh, bye to our friends on Instagram and see you to you on Facebook.